guys welcome back to my channel my name is Adeze and I'm a mommy youtuber from Port Harcourt Nigeria if you're coming to my channel for the first time you're welcome please stay to the end and we're going to have light refreshments for you at the end of this video okay <laughs> and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back please welcome our new subscribers our new guests and yeah hopefully those of you who are new hopefully you like this video and you subscribe and keep coming back okay so today i'm going to be talking about something that is a bit of a hot topic um in this country it's not really a hot topic in on social media and mass media per se but it is a hot topic between friends and families between spouses between you know siblings and all that is a bit of a hot topic because it's something that affects us all and the topic is about relocating out of this country relocating to Canada I use Canada because Canada is like hot cake right now that's where most people are relocating to but I'm talking about just leaving this country for good like going to another country to raise your kids to reside there me personally I'm kind of torn on this topic so in this video I'm going to be talking about reasons why i'm kind of considering leaving this country okay so if you like to hear my reasons and if you like to know my thoughts on this topic just keep on watching okay so amongst my friends i have those who are they're leaving this country in fact they're not they're not about to stay back it's not an option for them they're working on getting their visas and their whatever permanent residency in other countries um, they are just their mind is set they are leaving this country for good while I have friends which are few I think I have just two friends who want to stay in Nigeria the rest of them they are <laughs> they, they, they're not about to listen to that talk okay for me I'm somewhere in between I before actually before I want people who said never i'm not leaving this country i love this country this country is my country no other place like niger niger spirit <laughs> for the culture <laughs> so i'm one of those people before but with the way things are going and especially since i started having kids it has kind of changed my perspective a little bit it has changed my priorities it has changed the way i see this country okay so let's start from the beginning okay if i'm leaving this country i'm not going to be leaving because of the major things like insecurity and corruption not those are not my main reasons for leaving my main reasons for wanting to leave this country are those things that we are kind of used to in this country that you don't really find prevalent in other societies you were kind of things that we are kind of i would say we are a little bit immune we're kind of immune to these things and we don't really we don't really observe them or we don't really see them as much as we should not like they don't happen they happen but we ourselves we don't really see them as bad or we don't really see them as odd because we grew up knowing those things okay okay let me explain myself you know how in people's households every household has a smell that those people in that household do not smell there's, they don't perceive that smell but when you go outside or when outsiders come into their homes outsiders immediately pick up these scents okay so that is the way it is with these things i want to talk about there are things that in nigeria we're used to it you know we're really it's not really a big deal to us but people outside the country these things are very odd to them and when they come to our country they, they can't they don't understand it okay a lot of these things are unfortunately tied to corruption and um yeah tied to corruption so in as much as i'm not living just because of corruption i want to live because of so many things that are still kind of tied to corruption so for me the first reason is in this country we don't have regard for human life okay let's just face it let's just accept it we don't have regard for human life a lot of things people die for in this country is on head of outside the country like people die for really stupid flimsy mistakes for stupid flimsy reasons for things that our government can help for things that we shouldn't even be considering like some, some sometimes i hear about women who die in um childbirth and stuff like that 
So then buy for reasons that are very I don't understand it, okay? So much as we try to act like, oh, in Africa we love each other, we are all about community, we are all about family. It's a lie. In this country, we do not regard human life. We don't. You see people wasting away on the street. You see what we call mad people, mentally challenged people on the street. And it's nothing. It's nothing to us. Now, um, when I, let me just uh, put a disclaimer. When I talk about Nigerians, when I say us or talk about Nigerians, I don't mean every single Nigerian on the face of this planet, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who are affected by all those who behave in the way I'm talking about. So don't come for me and say it's not all Nigerians, Nigerians, <laughs> I, I get that point, okay? I'm a Nigerian myself, and, I, and some of these things irritate me. So, I'm not saying every single Nigerian is of the earth. I mean, we're like 5 billion Nigerians at this point. <laughs> we're like 7 billion Nigerians at this point, okay? Every single one of us cannot act the same way. So, yeah. So, what I'm talking about mentally, you see some people that are on the street, they're mentally challenged. These are things that with maybe little medical intervention, they'll be better. But no, in this country, we're going to leave them on the streets. Let them be roaming the streets. Let them be misbehaving. Look, one of the reasons why I started to make this video, one of the reasons things that got me thinking when I, I started, um, why I said let me make this video, is because now when I drive around with my kids, I'm driving my kids in the car, we're discussing, we're having fun. Next thing, a madman is walking around flashing his, his um, private parts to my kids. It is not right. If people have mental challenges, there should be a place that they should go to. They shouldn't be on the street. We do not value human life. If you value human life, your heart should be heavy. Sometimes I see dead bodies on the road. And to us, we feel it's normal. Oh, yeah, yeah, person don't die, on the road. It is not normal. We are not animals. We shouldn't have people on the road, dead bodies on the road. It's things, these are things that, that, the, that the, the authorities should tackle as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. Why should my child, as, as young as she is, be seeing a rotten body on the road? When I'm not living in a jungle, when I'm not living in a war torn, torn area or something like that. It is not right. Okay? I'm trying not to get too emotional in this video, but I, I think that I think that's going to be very hard. There are so many things. Look at the way people drive in this country. People drive like mad people. As in, we drive like like our life is there uh, we have nine lives each or 90 lives each the way we drive in this country i know it's stupid thing about the way we drive in this country everybody's in a hurry until we have accidents we are all in a hurry but scratch my car now me that i was zooming off you that you were zooming off both of us will now stand there and start arguing on the road for hours where was that rush where where was the rush you were rushing before why don't you rush away since you are since where we are going to was so important that you could not slow down how come a scratch on your car now is slowing you down for hours Okay, so to me, these are things that, in fact, there was something that happened again with my daughter. That's why I said, when I started having kids, my, my mentality started changing about some things. One day in Hold Up, I was taking Cora. I picked Cora from school and I was going to pick Eva from school. And we were in a Hold Up, I'm kind of person that I like to drive normally. Please, I'm not in a hurry. I've not seen the place that I'm rushing to that will make me drive stupidly. Maybe if I'm rushing to an airport or something. But even at that, I've not seen, I've not seen the place that I'll be rushing to that will make me drive stupidly. So I was just driving normally. I know how people, some people will just be driving wah wah wah. That's what we call it. Uh, I'm really sweating, there's no light. Anyway, you know some people drive wah wah wah. That's what we call it wah wah wah. They enter here, come out here, enter here, come out here, and they go. Sometimes they don't even go. Sometimes they hit themselves and they stay there. Why we that we were on a normal lane, we now go. Or they leave our lane and go somewhere else, and our lane starts moving fast. I like that one. I don't allow them to enter back. No, since you are smart, since you are smart to leave the lane, you better maintain that same energy. <laughs> anyway. So some people were driving wow wow and they were going fast. And Cora turned to me and said, Mommy, mommy, look at those people who are going fast. Mommy, follow them now. Mommy, move. Follow this road. Follow this way. They, they are going fast. As she said that, I was like, how can I teach my child now to do the right thing, to, to follow rules and regulations, to obey rules, to drive safely, when the society around her is showing her otherwise? Yes, thankfully, and, and that was why I pray to God. I pray to God to always do the right thing and for my child to see me as an example not the rest of the world okay but at the same time she's still going to be influenced by the society we live in no matter how i want to live in a bubble she's still going to be influenced by society i live in so all these things are things that add up to why i, I say sometimes living this country might just be the best option for me the other day i saw where someone was using sniper you guys sniper insecticide insecticide that kills that kills war geckos and, ra and rats Insecticide that kills roaches, insecticide that kills rodents is what somebody took and was spraying on stockfish. Stockfish that we used to cook food. 
and that's just because somebody filmed it. We don't know the worst things that happened that we were oblivious to. I heard that they inject um, pomon that is cow skin. They inject it with formaldehyde. What they use to preserve uh, um, dead bodies, embalming liquid, is what our people inject into pomon to make the pomon look lush. That's what our people do. And at the end of the day, we buy these things, we eat these things, people start falling sick, people start developing all kinds of illnesses. I don't know what is causing it. We don't, we, we don't have regard for human life in this country. Let's just face that fact. And so many people, so many people, so many um, um, our authorities are doing nothing about this. It's not that they don't know. Do we even have people who go to um, um, restaurants to check out restaurants and to, to uh, what they call it to regulate and inspect what they do there? Do we have bodies like that? People can just cook anything, anything, and bring it and will be eaten. People can cook anything. People can cook in the dirtiest of environments, and we don't know. You see people, you see people making zobo, making kunu, making all these street beverages, using containers that they picked from hospitals, from 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 trash. They pick all those things, just carry one soap and wash it. Who told you that soap soap kills germs? Some of the germs that we have in our bottles, in our plastics, it is only extremely high temperature that can kill them. But we don't do those things. We just carry them, carry soap. Some people don't carry soap. People just carry rinse it. Put granite inside, carry it and give you eat. Okay, some of these things we need to really think about. Soon I think about this, and I'm like, I'm not saying these things don't happen in other countries. Don't get me wrong, that's another disclaimer. Some things I'm mentioning, I'm not saying they don't happen in other countries, but they are minimal. Let's just be frank, they are minimal compared to how they happen in Nigeria. In Nigeria, they happen with reckless abandon, like they happen, it's just normal, it's like nobody nobody's busting an eyelid at them. In other countries, people are hiding to do these things in Nigeria by doing it in broad daylight. Broad daylight while doing these things. You go to a clinic or a pharmacy. I call them chemists. I don't even call them pharmacy chemists, although chemists still mean pharmacy. But you go to them, you have headache, they carry antibiotics and give you. You have this, they carry steroid creams and give you. Killing your immune system, killing, killing your 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 antibodies or whatever. Destroying your system. No people quacks everywhere, nobody's checking them. Okay, go to our hospitals and see some kind of things that are happening there. Just go to hospitals first of all. You know, some 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 of us maybe because we've not fallen ill, we've not had serious illnesses that require some treatment. We don't know what is going on in this country. People are dying every day for flimsy reasons. Flimsy reasons, flimsy reasons. They didn't pay deposit, somebody's dying. Uh, uh, gas has finished, oxygen has finished. You go to a teaching hospital, they don't have this, they don't have that, they don't have this, they don't have that. Go to a private hospital, they carry you to a private hospital. We have this one, we don't have that one. They carry you to another private hospital. The person's life lifespan is reducing as they are carrying from place to place, lifting from here to here to here. Before you know it, the person is dead. After paying so much money, after putting everybody through heartache, the person still dies. Okay, so these are the things that when I think about, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. I can't stay in this country. I can't do this anymore. I need to leave this country. Do you know that in this country, we celebrate death more than we celebrate life? Oh, you don't know? Okay, let me gist you. Think about it this way. Look at the processes we go through for burials. Look at the processes. Look at the things that are demanded for someone's burial. Someone dies. Some of the person's job we put in a, in a, in a cemetery. And the family will move on with their life. No, 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 not in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we'll keep the body in the mortuary for, for months if, if, they don't, if they don't agree on a date to bury the person. They'll keep the person there for months. Money is going. Then time for burial. We have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that. The person who is bereaved is the one that is expected to do 90% or 100% of, of what it takes to bury that uh, person that they lost. It's not, enough, it's not enough that they lost the person. They have to go through stress. When somebody is alive, you see people that are alive. There are people that there are people don't care about them. People don't care about them. Their family members don't take care of them. Their relatives abandon them. When they die, all those relatives will come out. They start feeling, start taking the whole thing as if it's one one giant party. You see people, people that don't even ask you. You don't even talk to you in years. But once somebody dies, everybody shows up from wherever they want to show up for the person's burial. Why can't we celebrate life? Why can't we why can't we focus more into celebrating people while they are alive than when they are dead? You see a dead body on the street, everybody's bringing out camera. You see people fighting, everybody's bringing out camera. You see people, you see a man beating his wife with 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 with, with all his energy as if he wants to kill her. You are bringing out camera. You are saying stop now, you are begging the man to stop. You are begging him, stop now, leave him now, now woman, stop now. Rather than you to go there and fight him and push him away, you are telling him stop now. Hey, this thing you are doing is not good to stop. What's the meaning of stop? 
when somebody is beating his wife up like that, we don't regard women like in this country. But let us forget that talk. Nigerians are very hypocritical. We love money in this country. We worship money in this country. Our presidents, our leaders came from within us. They didn't come from another country to come and rule us. They didn't come from another country. We are the ones that put them in power. They came from within us. So if you remove Buhari today and put there whoever you else wants to put there, it is still the same freaking thing because the society has been corrupted. The society that you are going to bring those people out from have been corrupted. These people are not aliens. They were born in this country. They were raised in this country. A lot of them were. A lot of them went to our, our, the same institutions that we went to. A lot of them do the same things that we do. A lot of them have the same mindset that we have. So why are you castigating Buhari and, and his and his cohorts that he's doing this, he's doing that? Hey, Buhari is this, Buhari is that. Meanwhile, they put together, they put their father there. Your people are going to be worse. They're going to be worse. So at the end of the day, when I see all these things, I'm like. Is it really what it is it really what it to be that patriotic to say you're that patriotic person where at the end of the day your country does not even care about you, your society does not care about you, your neighbors do not really care about you? See the way we disregard law and order in this in this country. You see somebody, you see how we drive on I'm still going back to driving because sometimes I and I, I, I just hold myself from having road rage anytime I, I'm driving. I'll be teaching my daughter, red means stop, orange means ready, green means go, or red means stop, orange means ready to stop or go. That's what I'm teaching my daughter. Meanwhile, when it's red, you see cars passing. When it's, it's, it's green for me to pass, the other lane, has, they, are, they are still passing. When they, that one has turned around a long time ago. If you notice one thing about this country, when there is hold up, check it very well. Most people that come to clear the road are only trying to clear the road for their cars to pass. Once their car passes, if you like, people should pack on yourselves <laughs> like this. Not just, not just have a pack on yourselves like this. You see a road. That is a two-lane road. Once there is hold up, or once anything happens like this, it will turn to a five-lane road because everybody wants to go first. Everybody is selfish. Everybody wants to go first. Nobody wants to do the right thing. Nobody wants to be the one to sacrifice for the other person. As long as my family is okay, as long as I'm okay, the whole world can go to hell. The whole country can burn down. As long as my family is fine. Who told you if this country burns down, your house will still stand? Who told you that? I don't people don't know. Who told you that if there's a if there's a bad pile up on the road now, that your car will not be involved or your family member will not be involved? So when we do some things in this country, don't don't do things and think that as long as I'm fine, the rest of the world can go to hell. It's not going to work like that. You will go with them. You might even leave the road. Another reason why I want to leave this country is our educational system. Oh my days! If I talk about our educational system, this video will be like five days long. Some of the projects we do here were feeling like, oh, we, we've done so much. Is what kindergartens, middle school, and other countries are doing for their holiday projects. But we don't see these things. We just see it and start applauding. Oh, this person created uh, uh, a moving car using uh, uh, this one and that one. Meanwhile, other people in other schools have done, in other countries have done it and forgotten about it. So at the end of the day. In this country, we celebrate mediocrity. Mediocrity, we just like to be ordinary. That's what we like. We tell people, be yourselves, be yourselves. That's why that's another, thing, another reason why I really don't want to raise my children in this society. Because in this society, we really do not allow people to express themselves to their fullest potential. We do not. We don't. We tell people, be yourselves. But as well, the caveat there that we don't say is, as you are being yourself, do not try to rise above the norm. Do not try to be yourself to the extent that you are not like the rest of us. The moment you are not like the rest of us, we start attacking you, we start fighting you. Okay? If everybody is saying A, you better be yourself in the direction of A. In that direction, that's the only place you can be yourself. The moment you start drifting to this direction, everybody all of a sudden starts having this fear, starts talking about you as if you, you have issues. At the end of the day, I want a society where I can raise my child to be who she wants to be, whoever that is, whoever that is. Now, I'm not saying you should not guide your children properly. I'm going to guide my children properly, but I'm not going to impose on them who they should be or what they should be. That's what society tries to do to us. That's why you go to school, the way our exams are even phrased in school, the way the questions are phrased in school, is just come and pour what I taught you or what I told you to read about. Come and pour it out the way I gave it to you. 
Don't come here and try to be expressing yourself and trying to be showing me that you have independent thoughts. Don't do that or else I'm going to fail. And don't get me wrong, I actually love my country. Like I keep saying, I love this country. I feel like we are genuinely good people, okay? Forget all the things I was saying before. I feel like we are genuinely good people. But so many factors have made us lose ourselves. So many things have made us, you know, start misbehaving. But we are genuinely good people. We genuinely have respect. Yes, yeah, sometimes this respect is what holds us back because we take it to the extreme. Sometimes our respect is what limits us. My dear, I love I love this country. I love the fact and that's <laughs> many people take this thing for granted, but you know how you can just enter markets, eh? Go and buy ube and corn. Come and make it in your house and be eating. Or you just walk out, walk down the street to buy suya. Many of us take those things for granted. It's when you leave this country, you will know. That <laughs> you're actually enjoying those things that you see as well. Oh, that's so basic. When you leave this country, you crave those things, you miss those things. So that's why I love this country. There are so many things that we were so free to do in this country that we're not really free to do outside the country. So our country, it has its own merit, and I think the Nigerians are incredibly smart. We're incredibly smart people. We're incredibly creative. The only problem is that the society is pushing our smartness and creativity into negative things, okay? Okay, so at the end of the day, I just pray for this country. I pray that things get better. I really don't want to leave. But at the same time, I'm now considering it really seriously. I love my country and I feel that things are going to get better. But I'm not promising or I don't believe that it's going to change with our generation. Because quite frankly, when I talk with some of my mates when i talk with her when i see things discussions that go on online when i see things that people say behind closed doors i'm like we are not making progress we are not making progress my generation is supposed to be that the generation that's going to help this country but i'm sorry i think that ship has sailed so i'm thinking that it's going to be my children's generation or even their children i'm hoping i'm hoping it's my children's generation sure, that actually make that change that we need in this country and that is why I don't blame parents, especially parents within my age group that want to go abroad and raise their children abroad. Now, don't get me wrong, abroad they have their own issues. Like I said, we have our own smell in this country that we don't, we're not really uh, sensitive to. That is the same way people abroad to have their own smell that when you get there, you're like, what? Like, this is not normal, but to them, it's normal. Okay, or this is not good, but to them, it's normal. So yeah, they have their own, we have our own. Uh, it, it, it's that's just what it is, but our own they smell. Where, 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 where? Our own, our own they smell. <laughs> so guys, that brings me to the end of this video. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope I didn't ramble a lot. For me, I don't know if I've said this before. Whenever I try to talk, you know, passionately, I talk really fast, or I even start stammering, but I hope I was able to get my point across. Let me know your thoughts. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Why do you agree with me? Why disagree with me? If you are considering leaving this country, what are your reasons? If you want to stay in this country, what also are your reasons? Okay? So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Liking videos help. In case you don't know, liking, commenting actually helps. And also, of course, subscribing to my channel. So, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.